Today we will discuss about boundary scan and how it is an important feature in testing many of today's products. Let's talk briefly about why the boundary scan standard was developed, run through how boundary scan tests work, and touch briefly on what products boundary scan test methods can be a good fit. Boundary scan exists because classic test technology, principally bed of nails in circuit test, was seeing a reduction in effectiveness due to the loss of test points on products. In classical in circuit tests, stimulus and responses are driven and received from the board under test through probes on a fixture connecting the tester to the board under test. In this way, the in circuit test can measure discrete devices and test ICs. ICT is threatened by technology drivers like device or board miniaturization and density, high-speed interconnect layout rules that result from customer needs. These rules include, for example, no test points on high-speed traces, use of ball grid arrays instead of Galwing ICs to reduce the IC footprint, and controlled impedance on high-speed differential traces. Since ICT testing of an IC requires probe access to drive the device's inputs and listen to the outputs, modern device speed or complexity simply make this challenging. We aren't testing quad NAND gate packs anymore. People were desperately concerned about losing test adequacy and diagnostic accuracy. So, starting in the late 80s, a collection of companies, weighted by telecoms, decided to take advantage of Moore's Law and start building test facilities into ICs themselves. A bold move for the late 80s. In 1990, IEEE released the boundary scan concept as a standard. It is now 23 years old and pervasive, although most people on the street never heard of it. Agilent has been in the forefront of boundary scan technology since its conception. The standard defines test logic that can be included in an IC to provide standard approaches to testing the ICs, or the interconnections between ICs. Using the standards, tests can be executed without the need to know how the component functions in order to get the correct response by driving the correct stimulus. New extensions to the standard are constantly being developed, such as the IEEE 1149.6 for testing AC coupled high speed differential signals, or IEEE 1581 for testing memory integrated circuits. Let's dive in a little deeper into IC testing to better understand the benefits of boundary scan testing. In a typical IC, stimulus driven into the input pins flow into the core logic in the IC and the relevant response is driven out to the output pins from the core logic. The boundary scan standard describes the addition of test cells connected to each pin of the device that can selectively override the functionality of that pin and isolate it from the core logic. The test cells are linked and controlled by a test access port controller or tap controller within the IC. A minimum of four pins are required to control the tap controller. Using boundary scan test methods, we have full control of the data that appears on the pins of the boundary scan device. Data can be streamed serially into the cells through TDI and out through TDO or parallel through the traces on the board. 
If there is another boundary scan device at the end of the trace, the cell at the destination can be read, and this can verify that the pins on either side of the board traces are connected properly. This method is what we call interconnect test. In order to execute the interconnect test, boundary scan components are chained together through the tap pins so that only one tap port controls all the devices in the chain during the test. In advanced implementations of boundary scan on the board under test, it is possible to see 20 or 30 boundary scan devices in a chain. These are usually found in large network communications boards or server boards. In this way, a vast number of interconnecting nodes are tested through the boundary scan cells without the need of test points. An example will be described later. Non-boundary scan devices may be found within the interconnection network of a boundary scan chain. Using the same ability to drive and receive data using the boundary scan cells, we can simulate the functionality of the non-boundary scan device by driving the appropriate stimulus into the non-boundary scan device and detecting the device appropriate outputs. It is as if we have built our testers, drivers and receivers inside the ICs themselves and are using a simple standardized serial protocol to get the same test and diagnostic results we once had with an in-circuit test and its bed of nails. In this simple example, a NAND gate is tested by driving the inputs from the left IC and receiving the response from the NAND at the IC on the right. This method of testing is called silicon nails test. Common products that use boundary scan include motherboards, network communication boards, gaming products, aerospace electronics, and so on. These boards are mostly digital in nature and usually include multiple boundary scan compliant ICs on the board. With more products going digital these days, we can test a large portion of the PCB using boundary scan test methods if they are properly designed with boundary scan in mind. This includes the correct selection of components and how they are connected together in a chain on the PCB. It is possible to cover more than 50% of the nodes on the board. Here is an example of a network communications board of 9700 nodes. Using boundary scan tests like interconnect, bus wire, silicon nails and so on, we are able to test 6237 out of the 9700 nodes. This gives us 64.3% coverage on the nodes just by using boundary scan test methods. On this board, there are 40 DDR3 devices that are tested by silicon nails tests, giving us a coverage of almost 1,800 nodes, which is about 18% of the total nodes on the board. DDRs are usually connected to the CPU or a memory controller on the PCB. This is true whether the DDR is soldered on the board or whether the DDR is on a DIMM attached to the PCB via a connector. To test a DDR, we would write bits of data to a memory location and read the data back from the same memory location. To catch shorts or opens on the DDR data pins, we will drive complementary data bits AA and 55 into the memory location. To catch shorts or opens on DDR address pins, we will walk a bit through all the address pins. Since there are usually no test points assigned to any of the DDR pins on the board, we would not be able to drive these DDRs directly using the tester. Most memory controllers or CPUs are boundary scan capable. Also, all the pins on the DDR will be connected to the memory controller or CPU. This is a perfect setup for boundary scan silicon nails test. 
technology marches on. Products will continue to shrink. Test points will continue to reduce. New test methods are being developed in line with new PCB and product design technologies. New boundary scan standards are constantly being developed that Agilent will continue to support on our manufacturing test systems. A good example is the Agilent X1149 Boundary Scan Analyzer Desktop Tool. For more information on the Agilent X1149 Boundary Scan Analyzer, go to www.agilent.com slash find slash x1149. Thank you for listening.